Okay, so now we will talk about the set of rational numbers. Now, we were talking about integers earlier. The set of rational numbers is the set of fractions, p over q, such that p and q are integers, and q does not equal 0. So basically, the numbers that we discussed called integers, if you start dividing those integers, you get the set of numbers called the set of rational numbers. Now, this set of rational numbers has a special characteristic. When you, re when you re represent them as a decimal, they're always repeating or terminating decimals. So anytime a number can be classified in this set of rational numbers, if you're going to represent that number as a decimal, that decimal will either terminate, meaning it'll have a place where there's no remainder, you get a zero remainder, you don't have to go any further with the division, or it'll be a repeating decimal, well, something that you can put a bar over and say it repeats, there's a repeating block of numbers. All right, so let's take a look at some things that we can talk about here. First off, when a fraction's numerator, or p, is larger than the denominator, or q, so if the top number is larger than or equal to the bottom number, what you have is called an improper fraction. And improper fractions have whole number parts to them. And if you represent it as a whole number with a proper fraction part, then you have what's called a mixed number. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to con convert improper fractions to mixed numbers. So remember, an improper fraction is just a fraction whose numerator is greater than or equal to its denominator, which means that there's a whole number part, there's a whole number of times that q can go into p. And if you take that whole number out and write the uh, proper fraction that's of what's left over, you'll get a mixed number. Let me show you what I mean here. Like for instance, the number 19 over 7. Notice that this is an improper fraction because the numerator is 19 and it's larger than the denominator, which is 7. Which means there are a whole number of times that the denominator can go into the numerator because the numerator is larger. As a matter of fact, 7 can go into 19 two whole times because 2 times 7 is 14. But if it goes in two whole times, what you have left over, well, since you're going all the way to 14, you have 5 left over to get to 19. So what we're doing here is we're actually doing this division. 19 divided by 7. 7 goes in twice. You get 14, and you subtract. The remainder is 5. The 5 is the new numerator. That's how many are left over. And you have 5 sevenths left over, the original numerator. So what we do, we determine how many times that can go into that. That becomes the whole number for my mixed number. So that's the whole number for my mixed number. The remainder becomes the new numerator, and the original divisor still remains the divisor for my, for my mixed number. So here I have an improper fraction. This is the mixed number. That means the exact same quantity. Part B. Let's do the same thing for negative 73 over 6. Well, this is the same, negative 73 over 6. The only thing that's, affecting, that's affected by the negative is the fact that the answer is going to be negative. But other than that, you can do this the exact same way we just did the last one. We're going to take 73, we're going to divide it by 6. Well, 6 go into 7 once, you subtract, you get 1, bring down the 3, and 6 goes into 13 twice. So 2 times 6 will give me 12. And I subtract, and the remainder is 1. So this is what I'm going to do. This number is equal to, well, it goes in 12 whole times. 6 goes into 73 12 whole times. But there's 1 left over, and that's a 1 out of 6. So 12 and 1, 6. So what we have, we have negative 73 over 6 is equal to 12 and 1, 6. All right. So that is one thing that you will be asked to do. You'll be asked to convert improper fractions to mixed numbers.
Convert improper fractions to mixed numbers. You may also be asked to convert the mixed number to an improper fraction. So for instance, I have 5 and 3 eighths. Well, this is a mixed number. There's a whole number part. And then you have the fraction part, the proper fraction, 3 eighths. OK, so this is what this means. This means that there are five groups of eight in this number. Five groups of eight. Well, five groups of eight would make 40. But there was three left over, which makes 43. So I have five groups of eight with the three left over, which gives me 43 over eight. So this is the process. You take the denominator, multiply it by the whole number, and add the numerator. So that's denominator times whole number plus numerator. And you keep the same denominator. 8 is still the denominator all the way through. So this is the final answer, 43 over 8. Let's try one more. So here again, the denominator is going to remain 9 the whole way through. 9 groups of, I have 3 groups of 9. 3 groups of 9. Well, 3 groups of 9 makes 27. But I have 7 left over. 7 was the remainder, so 27 plus 7. 27 plus 7 is 34 over 9. So there's the improper fraction that represents this mixed number. All right, so enough with improper fractions and mixed numbers. The next thing is we're going to express rational numbers as terminating or repeating decimals. Okay, actually what I set up here is that anytime you have a rational number, a quotient of two integers, the answer will always be a terminating or repeating decimal. So we guarantee to get either a terminating or repeating decimal if we have a fraction where the numerator and denominator are both integers. Numerator and denominator are integers, therefore this answer will be either a terminating or a repeating decimal. Let's see which one it is. In order to change a fraction to a decimal, what you do is you divide the numerator by the denominator. So the bottom number goes outside, the top number goes inside. You place your decimal point. The decimal point will go here, which means I have to line it up with the decimal point in the answer. And 8 does not go into 7. So the number of times that 8 goes into 7 is 0. So there's no whole number part for this decimal number. So I add a 0, and I try to figure out how many times 8 goes into 70. Well, 8 goes into 70. Let's see, 8 times 8 is 64. So I would say 8. 8 times 8, like I just said, was 64. And then I subtract. And 70 minus 64, well, 70 minus 64 is 6. All right, now I'm going to add a 0 and bring it down. Bring down my 0. And now I'm looking to see how many times 8 goes into 60. Well, that would be 7 times. 8 goes into 60 7 times. I place the 7 above the 0 I just added in. 7 times 8 is 56. And I subtract. And I get a 4. So I'm still getting remainders. So I'm going to add a 0 and bring it down because I see no pattern yet. I don't see any pattern. And it hasn't finished. hasn't ended. So I bring down a 0 here. 8 goes into 40 five times. 5 times 8 is 40. I subtract and I get 0. Because I have a remainder of 0, that means that this is a terminating decimal. So the number 7 eighths 
as a decimal is actually the terminating decimal 0 0.875. So there's the final answer there. So this one turned out to be a terminating decimal. Terminating means eventually I got the remainder to be 0. Eventually the remainder was 0. Let's try another. Let's try 13 over 6. 13 over 6. Call this part B. So 13 over 6. Well, once again, I'm going to take the number above. Oops. Let me give myself a little bit more room here. So we're using 13 over 6, I said. So we're going to take the 13 and we're going to divide it by 6. Well, 6 goes into 1 zero times, but 6 goes into 13 twice. So I put a 2 above the 3. 2 times 6 is 12. I subtract and I get 1. Well, I'm going to add a 0 and a decimal in so I can continue. So add in the 0 and the decimal. I'm going to bring that 0 down. What I'm looking at now is how many times 6 goes into 10. Well, 6 goes into 10 once. I put the 1 above the 0 that it is added in. So that it's to the right of the decimal point. 1 times 6 is 6. Then I subtract. 10 minus 6 is 4. So once again, I'm going to add in a 0, bring it down. Let's see what I have here. 1 times 6 is 6. Oops, sorry. How many times does 6 go into 40? Sorry about that. Well, 6 goes into 40. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 6 is 36. And I subtract and I get a 4. So I add a 0 in and I bring it down. What I notice here is that I've already tried to see how many times 6 goes into 40. I already determined that it was going to be 6 times, and that was going to give me 36. And then when I subtract, I'm going to get another 4, and I'm going to bring down the next 0, and I'm going to have another 40. So I'm going to keep getting 40s at this point. Every time I do this, I'm going to keep getting a 40. So I'm going to keep putting 6s up here. So the 6 is going to repeat. So I'm going to put a bar over only the 6. What this means is... Let's see, right here. This is equal to uh, 2.1, and then the sixes repeat forever. So you get repeating sixes forever. And the way we write that is 2.1 with a six with a bar over only the six. You see, if you put the bar over the one and the six, let's, let me caution you to that. This is the correct answer. If you write this answer, 2.16 with a bar over both, what you're saying is that this is 2.161616 repeating forever. But that's not what you want. We only want the sixes to be repeating forever. So be careful with where you begin and end that bar. All right, so there's an example of a repeating decimal, and I showed you part A was an example of a terminating decimal. All right. That's how we take the fractions and turn them into the decimals. Now what we're going to do is we're going to express decimals as fractions. So first we're going to start with terminating decimals. Okay, so so this is what we're going to do. Whenever we're given a terminating decimal, the last digit in the number, there has to be a last digit in the number because it's a terminating decimal. The last digit in the number, the place value of that digit will tell you what the denominator of the fraction you should write will be. For instance, this digit, the 5, the last digit, is in the tenths hundredth place. This is 5 hundredth. So this number is actually 35 hundredth. 
What do you mean? Well, if I'm going to write this as a fraction, the denominator is 100 because this 5 is in the hundredth place. Since it's in the hundredth place, that makes the denominator of the fraction 100. And the numerator of the fraction is just the number without the decimal, 35. So this number is actually read as 35 hundredth, and it's written as 35 hundredth. But it also says, if possible, reduce the lowest terms. So let's reduce this to lowest terms. Let's see. There's a number that goes into both 35 and 100. I know that 5 times 7 is equal to 35. And I know that 5 times 20 is equal to 100. And if I cancel the 5s out, that's reducing. I get the final answer 7 over 20, which is a fraction in reduce in lowest terms. That fraction is a, has no common factors in the numerator and the denominator. So that's how we're going to change terminating decimals to uh, quotients of integers or rational numbers. Let's try another one. B. Let's try. Okay. Here we have another terminating decimal. I know it terminates because there's the last digit. We just have to identify the place value of that last digit. Now the place value of that last digit, this is the this is thousandths place. So I know that the denominator of the fraction is going to be 1,000. So if, if it's a thousandths place, the denominator is 1,000. And the numerator is just that number without a decimal, which is the number 23. That's in lowest terms already because 23 is a prime number and it is not a factor of 1,000. So let's try one last problem here. Let's see. All right, so let's try uh, five point seven. So let's write this terminating decimal number as a quotient of two integers. Well, let's see. Looking at this, I see that there's a 5 for the whole number part. So I'm going to actually write this as a, uh, I'm actually going to write this as a mixed number as opposed to just an improper fraction. And the whole number part of the mixed number is going to be 5. So all you do is take the whole number here, the part to the left of the decimal, and translate it to being the whole number here. The fraction part, well, the last digit in this number is in the tenths place. So the denominator of my fraction should be a 10. And there you have it. That number is 5 and 7 tenths. That's actually how you read that answer. All right, so that is how we're going to change terminating decimals to uh, rational numbers. All right, now let's go ahead and modify this a little bit. Express each not terminating decimal anymore, but let's now take a look at repeating decimals. And we're going to write repeating decimals as rational numbers in lowest terms. All right, so let's see. Let's try the repeating decimal. Let's try an easy one first. Let's try 0 0.2 repeating. So we're going to try to write this number, which is 0 0.2, 2 repeating forever and ever. We're going to try to change that number into a quotient of two uh, integers. So here's the process. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to name our number. I'm going to give it the name n for number. So this is the number that I'm looking to write as a fraction. I call it n. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply n by something that's going to move the decimal point beyond the first repeating block of numbers. Well, the only number that's repeating here is 2. So the only thing I have to do to multiply the only thing I have to multiply by to move the decimal beyond the first repeating block is by 10. Let me show you what I mean. If I multiply n by 10 or find 10n, 10n is what I'm looking for. Well, multiplying this number by 10 moves the decimal point once which makes it two point, 
and then there's going to be twos repeating after that forever. So here's the number n. This number is 10 times n. This number is 10 times that number. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these two equations and I'm going to subtract them. So on the left side, I'm going to have 10n minus n, 10n minus n. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have 2.2 repeating minus 0 0.2 repeating. So I get this equation, which is 10n minus n, which is 9n, is equal to, and then 2.2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 repeating minus 0 0.2, 2, 2, 2, 2 repeating. Well, all the twos that are repeating forever and ever are going to cancel each other out. The only thing you're going to have left over is the number 2. And then, if you want to find out what n is, remember, n was our original number. You just divide both sides by 9. So it turns out that the number we're looking for, the, the, the quotient of two uh, integers, is 2 ninths. 2 ninths is the repeating decimal 0 0.2. So you can do this on the calculator, divide 2 by 9, you'll get this answer. It'll be repeating twos forever. Let's try another one. Try this one. Oh, repeating. So we have this number, ones and fives repeating forever. Let's see. Well, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to give the number a name. I'm going to call it n. Now, in this case, I have two numbers repeating. So in order to move the decimal beyond the first repeating block of numbers, I actually have to multiply both sides by 100 to move the decimal twice. That way one of the 15s, the first repeated 15, will be on the left of the decimal point. So I multiply by 100, I get 100n is equal to, and then when you move the decimal twice, you get 15 point, and then 1, 5 will be repeating forever and ever and ever after that. So now I have these two equations. I'm going to subtract these two equations now. The bottom one, 100n, minus the top one, bottom one again, 15.15 repeating minus the top one, 0 0.15 repeating. All right, the left hand side I get n is equal, oops, I get 99n. 99n, I got 99n's. And the right hand side, I would find this difference, and all that happens is all the repeating 15's after the decimal point, to the right of the decimal point cancel, and I get 15, and then I divide both sides by 99. So I get n, which is 0 0.15 repeating, is actually equal to 15 over 99, but I can't leave it that way because I have to reduce that fraction. I know that 3 goes into 15, so this is uh, 3 times 5, and the bottom is 3 times 33. Those 3's cancel, and the final answer is 5 over 33. So 0.15 repeating as a fraction is the number 5 over 33. If you divide 5 by 33 on your calculator, you'll get a bunch of repeating 15s. All right, let's try one other. Let's try... Let's try 0 0.165. Let's try this one. And actually, the numbers that I want to be repeated are the 6 and the 5. So the 1 is not being repeated. Only the 6s and the 5s are being repeated. All right, let's try. Let's call this number n n is equal to 0 0.165, where the 6 and the 5 are repeating. All right, now, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by a number that's going to move the decimal beyond the first repeating block. In this case, the first repeating block is the number 6 and 5, so I'm going to move the decimal three times by multiplying by 100 again. So 100 and, oops, not 100. This time I'm multiplying by 1,000. 1,000. That way I can move the decimal point one, two, three times. 
I'll get the number 165 point, and then six and five will repeat after that forever and ever and ever. So I get this number. And actually, since this number is not a part of the repetition, remember the trick we've been doing, we've been subtracting off the repeating part, the six five, six five, six five. Since that's not a part of the repeating, I'm gonna actually find out what to do to move it beyond the number that's not repeating. You also have to figure, you also have to have a number that represents the repeating part to the right of the decimal point only. And this one has a one to the right of the decimal point. So I'm gonna multiply this top number also by 10, just to move the decimal point once to the right. So I'm gonna get 10n, 10n is equal to, well, if you move the decimal point once, you get 1.65 repeating. That way I can get these 6.5 repeating to cancel that 6.5 repeating. So these are the two equations I'm gonna subtract from each other. I don't need this one, these two, because that's gonna cancel out all the repeating digits. So it's gonna actually be 1,000n minus 10n is equal to, and then when you subtract these two, well, let's see, 165 minus one is 164, and the six and five just cancel each other out. So we get this, and let me see, that's 990n is equal to 164, in which case I see that 165 repeating is equal to 164 over 990. Oops, 990. Let's see. And that reduces to 82 over 495. So we get 165 is equal to 82 over 495 because 2 goes into both of those numbers. 2 goes into both of those numbers. All right, so that is how we're going to deal with the rational numbers.